Super Napier is a boon to farmers. Due to its high protein content, the livestock is healthy, fat and strong. Super Napier is the only grass which gives 200 tons of yield per acre. What are the special features of this grass? Super Napier or Pek Chong Wan? How to cultivate this? What about maintenance? Let us see everything in detail. The creator of this grass is Kaveri Farm Virudhachalam. The parents of this grass are rye and Napier grass or elephant grass. Its scientific name is Penicetum Parperium. Super Napier helps the Indian farmers make a profit. Okay, so what is the Super Napier grass? How can farmers make profits from this grass? What are the specialities of this grass? How to plant this? How to maintain? How to harvest? We are going to learn everything in just 10 minutes. Firstly, what is Super Napier? What is this used for? Super Napier is a type of grass. All the livestock we grow, goats, cows, dairy cows, they all love to eat this. This is a green fodder for livestock. The stalks of this grass are sweet like sugarcane. The leaves are smooth. That's why livestock love eating this. Okay, if the livestock love to eat this, what benefits does that give? It has a high protein content. As it contains 14 to 18% of protein, the livestock that eats this grows up with good health and additional weight. This grass grows really tall. It grows up to a height of 400 to 500 centimeters. Its leaves are also long and wide. The leaves are 115 to 125 cm long and 6 to 8 cm wide. This is the only grass that has more leaves. A single grass has about 400 to 450 pitches or leaves. This does not sag or break like the other grass varieties. Durers are about 25 to 30 pitches. Regrowth crop can be harvested up to 8 times in a year. Larger quantities can be harvested in less space. This grass is useful for up to 8 years. Insects do not infect this grass as it is naturally immune. It can be cultivated in all districts. This means that this super napier grass can grow in any season and in any climate. The super napier will thrive even in salty water. The yield does not decrease. Its protein could be reduced to some extent. That too is only in salty water. The grass will thrive with health in all other types of water. There is no restriction on when it should be cultivated. It can be cultivated in any month of the year and in any type of soil. The yield will not reduce even if it is planted on the beach sand. Due to the salinity, the protein content could be a little less. Otherwise, it can be cultivated in any kind of soil. Now let's see how to plant the super napier grass. Method 1 Land Preparation Using an iron plow, deep plowing should be done for about half a foot to one foot depth that is 15 cm to 30 cm. If a machine plow is used, half a foot depth is enough. If a bull is used to plow, then the depth should be about one foot. After that, a rotavator should be used to plow once. After that, the bars should be set at a distance of 3 feet or 90 cm. Method 2 Nutritional Method Prior to the last plowing, apply 10 tons of manure per acre and plow well once. Per acre, use 60 kg of nitrogen that is 130 kg of urea, 20 kg of phosphate that is 125 kg super of phosphate and 16 kg of ash that is 27 kg of potassium. The full quantity of phosphate and ash as well as 50% of nitrogen should be applied as the base manure. The remaining 50% of the nitrogen should be applied on the 30th day of planting as top fertilizer. After each harvest, if we apply 30 kg of nitrogen, that is 65 kg of urea, we will get a higher fodder yield. We can also take 75% of the recommended phosphate and nitrogen and add azospirulum, azophos, phosphobacterium 800 grams per acre or azophos 1600 grams per acre and use this mixture as manure. This increases the yield and also reduces the fertilizer requirement by 25%. Method 3 Crop spacing 90 cm to 60 cm Seed quantity, each acre requires 10,000 to 12,000 double node stems. How to plant? 
After watering, the stems should be planted on the bars with a spacing of 60 cm. The method used is one stem per pitch. When planting, the stem should be tightly placed in the soil. The soil around the stem should also be tightened. Doing so increases the germination capacity. Also, the super napier stems should be planted slantingly at an angle of 20 to 30 degrees. Planting this way gives an excellent yield. Three rows of mixed crops. Super napier can be grown in one row and mixing it with desmanthus can increase the nutrient content even more. Method 4. How to remove the weeds? After 30 days, if there are weeds, they have to be removed only by hands. If required, the weeds can be removed by 45 days for the second time. After that, as the super napier grass grows really fast and dense, weeds do not sprout. After 80 days, after the first harvest, weeding can be done if necessary. There will be no need to weed after that. Method 5 Irrigation. Watering should be done on the third day. After that, depending on the type of soil and the availability of rain, irrigation should be done once in 8 to 10 days. Importantly, wastewater can also be used for irrigation. Super Napier grows well in all types of water. Like we said earlier, even in salty water, the Super Napier grass grows well and gives an excellent yield. Imagine the amount of yield it can give in places where there is natural irrigation. Method 6. After the first weeding in 30 days or the second weeding in 45 days, depending on the nature of the soil, weeds will sprout. These weeds should be completely removed, required nutrients should be added and the soil should be extinguished. After that, for every three harvest, that is, every 150 days, the soil should be extinguished. Method 7 Control the disease. Super Napier graft grass is never attacked by diseases. Therefore, crop protection is not required. Even if it is required, the mix of chemicals available in stores should never be used. It can go dangerous. The reason is, those chemicals are poisonous. If that is harvested and given as fodder, it can lead to the death of livestock. That is why it is always good to use natural pesticides. More importantly, all natural pesticides and growth stimulants should be sprayed through the leaves at least 15 days before harvest. Else, the fragrance of the pesticides stays on the surface and insides of the leaves. The livestock hesitates to eat such a fodder. This first harvest can be done within 75 to 80 days from the day of planting. Depending up on the soil, water and method of agriculture, the time may vary by 10 days. After that, harvest can be done every 45 days, which means 8 harvests per annum. Every 2 or 3 years, the radius of the crops should be reduced and the bar size of 3 by 2 feet should be maintained properly. In the long run, if we follow the natural farming methods, we can retain the excellent yield and maintain the protein levels for a period of up to 8 years. Organic or Natural Farming When we say natural farming, we are going to feed the super napier to some livestock like a goat or a dairy cow. The manure produced by the livestock after eating this grass can be composted and used as a fertilizer for the super napier. Due to the nutrients in the fertilizer, the super napier grows extremely well. This can once again be cut and given as fodder to the livestock. This is called self-sufficiency natural farming. If we continue this cycle, we can get a good fodder and can also keep our livestock healthy. Super Napier By giving unhealthy fodder sprayed with pesticides to our livestock, we are spoiling their health. Don't eat this, it might be injected. Don't give to children, we don't eat this. These are some things we say Fearing everything, 
enough to such bears which questions our future all our livestock like dairy cows goats cows chicken fish they all love eating this healthy super napier grass let us cultivate this naturally and keep our livestock healthy let us all be healthy too let us leave health for our future generations to buy fodder and seedling stems please log in seedsbazaar.com contact us kaveri seed farm tamil nadu india contact number 9488932336763943 